everybody. Welcome back to my project 13, 2015. Going quick, 2016, coming in fast. Time keeps on slipping, slipping into the future. Yeah, you know that song, but don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. You know, I wanted to say thank you. It's been a great year. It's been a phenomenal year. A lot of growth, continuous, continuous learning on my part from not just myself doing my own homework on what I do here as far as being a reviewer on my project 13, but a lot of that coming from you, the subscriber, the viewer, you've taught me a lot throughout the year. So thank you from top reviewers out there who've been around for a while, who stay in contact with me and give me, um, educational tips, uh, positive feedback, constructive criticism, and helping me grow. And thank you to all of you. And you know who you are. Uh, just, it's been amazing, amazing, and looking forward to 2016 to some more amazing moments and, and still continuous growth. You know, not just with the channel and numbers for subscribers, but for me personally, um, I'm amazed at what I know now than what I, what I knew back on the very first day, even at the beginning of this year. So that's always progress. That's what I'm looking forward to in 2016. So, man, I'm super stoked. I hope you're digging it. Thanks for being a part of this channel. You know, if you're viewing for the first time, subscribe. Click like, dislike, it supports and funds this channel. So I'm looking, I'm looking to just go into new avenues with this channel. And, um, yeah, just thank you so much. Really. It's, it's, it's been a fun ride and it's going to be, uh, I don't know what 2016 holds, but I'm looking forward to it all. I'm ready for the challenge. The other thing I wanted to talk about was top five smartphones. Now you can go into YouTube and there's a lot of reviewers covering a lot of what they feel or think or know the top five smartphones of the year. I have not had the opportunity to have a lot of these devices in my hand out of what's being mentioned right now out there. There's only one that I've had in hand, and that's the Huawei Nexus 6P. You know, they're mentioning the BlackBerry Priv, the Note 5, the Galaxy S6, the iPhone 6, LG G4, the LG V10. I hope I'm saying that one right. But, um, yeah, and I've not, I've played with some of them in store, different stores, uh, cell phone stores, you know, like Verizon, T-Mobile, at I, I go into those places and, and dink around with these devices. You know, and they let me, and I talked to them about the channel. I've actually had some of them subscribe, and it's really cool. So I've had moments, and there's people I work with that have some of these devices, so I get to have a little hands-on. But I've not had them a long period of time like the Huawei Nexus 6P. So at the end of the day, overall, from doing my homework and watching these videos, the Huawei Nexus 6P seems to be the device of the year from what I'm gathering. And I really feel that it is. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm not going to get into specs and all that, but briefly, I'm going to tell you why. Nobody expected Huawei to be the company that was going to craft, create this device as the Nexus device, the next Nexus device, outside of LG doing the uh, Nexus 5X. You know, when we heard these devices coming out and they announced Huawei, a lot of people were like, "Who, who's Huawei? You know, and even now people don't know Huawei. They, you say Nexus, they know Nexus for the most part, but not Huawei. So they picked this company, Huawei, who's really trying to make a mark right here as far as in the United States. And um, they did it right. They killed it, man. They totally killed it with this device. But the thing is, it's a unique device and how it was crafted and it got criticized at the beginning because of the hump on the back where the camera is and it was ugly it was odd we don't know what this is going to be like but as soon as it came out and reviewers were holding this device in their hand all of a sudden it was sexy it was beautiful it wasn't that bad and and who's Huawei <laughs> right and all of a sudden boom the explosion and all the other devices were ignored because this device took everybody somewhat by surprise when everybody was kind of holding their breath, kind of going, mm, I don't know. I think it deserves number one because, well, we didn't expect Huawei to do it. We didn't expect them to kill it, and they did. We didn't expect that this design, this this body build of a device, the sexiness, the well-crafted 
design of the device was going to be liked, loved, and it's loved. And then it sort of went from there. We sort of expect those other devices to always get better, whether it's in every area or at least the areas that are most important with like cameras and battery life and so forth. And, you know, whether it be the Note 5 or an LG G4. Um, but this was really a surprise. And there was a few of us out there who I, I always kind of believed, I always liked the way it was designed. So, um, I don't know, you guys. To me, that, that really deserves number one. It deserves the trophy for number one device of the year. Now, here's the devices I've had in hand throughout the year. Check it out. So, please stay with me. Zenfone 2, Alcatel Idol 3, HTC 626, the Sony C4, the Moto G 3rd Gen, the Moto X Pure Edition, the Nexus 5, X by LG, the Huawei Nexus 6P, the Blue Studio Energy 2, the Blue Pure XL, which I'm using right now to do this video. There might be a little focus hunting, so my apologies. That's a lot of devices. Some, a couple I sent back, a lot of them I sold, and some I still have. And um, I'll tell you something. I don't know where my other device is here. I didn't mention this guy. The Nexus 6. So I still got this. And I have my Moto X Pure Edition. And um, I have a Nokia Lumia 1520. I am comfortable now with selling the Moto X Pure Edition because of the Pure XL by Blue. Great device. I, I'm starting to really, really love this device and what it can do for me for 350 bucks. Expandable storage of 64 gigs. It already has internal 64 gigs of memory. It's got a quad HD Super AMOLED display, six inch device, and it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, and it's just, yeah, I, I think if there was a device that could, that could take the place of the Moto X Pure Edition, this is it for me. We're all different, and I want you to understand that some of these devices, I may have a little bit of negatives and why I didn't keep them, and there's more positives to them, but I have to make decisions on how I make my money, too, to buy other devices to bring in and do reviews. But we're all different. We're like day and night. So if I got rid of a device because it personally didn't work for me, it doesn't mean it doesn't work for you. And I'm stoked for you 100% thumbs up. It's We're all different types of users, and we all expect our devices to do different things for us, whether we're gamers, video watchers, web browsers. Um, we do a lot of social media. So we're all different. So I'm not here to criticize anybody for keeping a device that I didn't keep. That's not what this is about. I, I totally respect what you have in hand. And if you love it, then I'm cool with that. Sweet. <laughs> None of my business, really. I'm just, I'm happy for you. But getting out of the way, what I feel is the number one device, I would say the number uh, one device, as far as being in its own classification of a device, that sort of set new standards for devices that a lot of people were calling mid-range flagship was the, is the Moto X Pure Edition 2015. Now, I, I don't think it should be called a mid-ranger or a flagship. I really feel it set new standards. It, it opened up a door for how we now look at devices differently. The Moto X Pure Edition is just that device, and we're going to start seeing more devices like that in a different group, classified with a different name. So, to me, that device for $400, front-facing speakers, expandable storage, almost pure, uh, stock Android, only has a couple Moto apps, fast charge, decent camera, decent battery life. You have to utilize your fast charge with that device because it's decent. It's not the greatest, but it's not bad. It's decent. Um, it just overall has been front-facing camera. Ooh, man, yeah, you know the front-facing camera on this on this device, the Moto X, is just sweet. Yeah, it sets it apart from other devices. So the Moto X, to me, is the device of the year when it comes to setting new standards in how we look at smartphones. I'll put it that way. I have a new flagship budget device of the year, and that is the Blue Studio Energy 2 over the Moto G 3rd Gen. Why? 
Well, it's got a super AMOLED display that's beautiful. It's only 720p, but it's gorgeous. But you know why? Because of the 5,000 milliamp battery. Yeah, baby. Three-day battery life. For me, two to two and a half. Plug it in, unplug it, and I don't have to babysit it for the next couple days and a half. Two days, two and a half. For you, if you're moderate to less than moderate, as a user, three solid days. That's an amazing, and it's only 130 bucks now. It was 180 like the Moto G 3rd Gen. It's dropped to 129 on Amazon. I'm telling you guys, if you want a simple device by Blue, pick up this device for that price. It is the flagship budget device of the year. And Blue, get off your butts. Get going with your customer base. Get going with your customer service. Get going with software. I don't care if you use MediaTek processors. Don't use that as an excuse. Okay, because that's what's being said out there. And I don't know how much truth is into that and how much easier it is to get software updates because you have a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor in your device. You know what? You have to make it work. You got a lot of people who want to believe in you. And most of the comments and feedback that I get about the blue devices that I've I've done reviews on, that's that's where people get to where they sort of stop and not want to get the devices because they're concerned about software updates. Come on, get on the ball. Do what's right so we can dig what you're doing. So we can start buying your because with the with the Studio Energy 2 and this blue XL, the pure XL. I mean, these are the blueprints of what's coming in 2016 and beyond. And if that's if this is what it is, we're excited. We're excited. So please give us something to believe in. Blue, yeah, talking to you. So I hope you're watching. Now, if I was to pick the best bang for your buck, device of the year you know what device you know what i'm going to say right which device has gravitational pull on me the nexus 6 why well it was too highly priced at one point it sort of faded out and then all of a sudden out of nowhere it drops to three and a half 350 bucks i pick it up at best buy and all of a sudden like the smartphone world froze and everything that had come out had sort of went away for a moment. And everybody started to focus on this device. Because they knew that you were going to get a 6-inch beautiful Super AMOLED front-facing speaker, pure stock Android device for 350 bucks instead of 600 something Too highly priced. This device is solid. It's smooth. It's silky. It's got great sound, great visuals for 350 bucks, And now you can get it for like 300 or 250 depending on what variant you're looking for and where you're getting it. People are, these companies are running out of these devices and trying to replenish them because there's a lot of you waiting. Yeah, it was just, there was just that moment where everybody stopped buying everything else and wanted to get an X6 because it was the best bang for your buck. It's an awesome device. It may not have the latest and greatest under the hood, but for the price and what you're getting, the resurgence of this device was amazing to watch. And I was getting feedback like crazy. I mean, I was watching videos, reviews, pop up everywhere, left and right when this happened. It was just this like this moment that the Nexus 6 said, here I am again. Yeah, I'm back. I'm worthy. And for that price, yeah, the Nexus 6, it's a gem, it's my baby. That's the best bang for your buck. So I would say the Huawei Nexus 6P is the device of the year. The device that set devices apart from other devices, set new, new rules, new standards is the Moto X edition 2015 by Motorola the flagship budget device of the year is the blue studio energy 2 and the best bang for your buck device of the year is the Nexus 6 all right you guys I've rambled on I've done a lot of mumble jumbo boom 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 you know me man I, I go off track a lot but I'm just trying to have a conversation it's like we're sitting here having coffee 
actually a Coke. And we're just chit-chatting. We're just chilling. 2016, a few hours away, guys. Be safe. Have a great time. You know, unity, peace, love. You know, make this day and going into tomorrow something great to remember. And think of one thing that you really appreciate about 2015 and think of one thing that we can all improve, in, improve on going into 2016. Till my next video, you guys, this is my Project 13. Peace. God bless. I'll be back in 2016.